In this video, we're going to have a quick look at um, two of the groups in the periodic table or two of the sections in the periodic table that you need to know about for Edexcel Additional Chemistry Topic 4. The first of these groups is the transition metals. Now, if you look at a periodic table, um, we know from Topic 1 that we've got group 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 0. The transition metals are actually this very large um, section of metals that are between are situated between group 2 and group 3. So right in the middle of our periodic table, the majority of metals are actually these transition metals. So for example, if you were asked what um, section of the, or group of the periodic table copper is in, copper is here, therefore it is a transition metal. And we just need to know a little bit of information about these. So our transition metals, or TMs, um, firstly, they, um, for the most part, have a very high melting point. So, for example, iron is extremely, um, got an extremely high melting point. You need to get it to um, around 1,000 degrees to melt it. Um, the second property that you need to know about for your exam is actually to do with some of the compounds they form. And transition metals um, generally form really nice, brightly coloured compounds. Just a couple of examples. Copper sulfate is a lovely blue colour. It's actually dark, a bit darker blue than this, but it's a nice blue colour. Um, iron, chlor iron chloride, sorry. FeCl2 is a really bright yellow colour. So you don't need to know loads about transition metals. You just need to know where they are, the fact that they are strong and have high melting points and that they form nice coloured compounds. Okay, so they form coloured compounds. Okay, the second uh, area or group of periodic table we need to know about are our noble gases, and we do need to know a little bit more information about these. The first thing we need to know is why they are called noble gases. A noble implies they are quite stable, you know, they, they don't really react. So we need to be able to explain why that is the case. If we take um, argon as an example, argon has got an atomic number of 18. It's got 18 electrons in total. In its first shell, we can fit two. In its second shell, we can fit eight electrons. And in its outer shell, we are going to have eight to make this up to 18. Okay, we can represent that as 288. Argon has got a full outer shell of electrons. In fact, all of the noble gases have got full outer shells. Okay, this is why we, um, they are noble. They do not react. They do not want to, to gain and they do not want to lose electrons. They are already happy and stable. Therefore, they're just going to flirt around um, on their own as single atoms and they're not going to really react with anything unless you really, really force them to. Just a quick note. On the periodic table um, that we have, we call it group zero, well, it is uh, labelled group zero. That is because if you were to draw another um, shell um, outside of this shell of electrons in it, that outer shell would have no electrons in it. That's why we, we sometimes refer to them as being group zero. Okay, we need to know properties of these. We have already said they are inert or non-reactive. It's the same thing. Okay, and this gives us uh, quite a lot of the uses of them. Um, argon, uh, in particular, is used in light bulbs. This is because the filament in a light bulb, uh, at least at one of the old-fashioned light bulbs, gets extremely hot when you turn the light bulb on. It gets so hot that it um, glows and gives out um, light. If you had normal air inside that light bulb, the oxygen in the air would react with that hot filament and it would cause your light bulb to blow. Because argon is inert or non-reactive, um, you have it in there with the hot filament and it is not going to react with the filament. and Therefore, your um, light bulb will not blow. So you use it for light bulbs. Uh, you also use it in things like f uh, food packaging, particularly for things like fruit to stop them reacting. And it's also used um, when you are welding, again, to stop the hot metal from reacting with oxygen. The second use of noble gas, in particular helium, 
Um, helium in particular has a very low density. What this means is it um, is uh, for, uh, for the same volume much lighter than most other gases. It will therefore um, rise um, and this allows us to use helium due to its low density for balloons and airships. Is that spell balloons? I'm not sure. So balloons and airships. 